Hello, my name is Anthony Linville and I'm a designer on Team Nearline. As the team looked at the options given to us, we wanted to choose something that elevated everything to the next level. So we created Nearline. Nearline is a first person tower defense game where you the player controls an avatar. As an avatar, you must defend against thousands of enemies trying to destroy your HQ. Your main objective, destroy the enemies, collect all the Nearline data. You do so by building an arsenal of weapons, ranging from a sniper, to a shotgun, to a flamethrower, and many more. You can build defenses such as towers and mines, and explore a huge world filled with life, ranging from random events that can cause devastation or give rewards, and collect hidden collectibles throughout. Every time you play this game, it will be a new experience because you, the player, decides where a weapon goes, a defense goes, and every time, your game will be your own journey. Early in the project, I implemented the item database inventory crafting system. Other than UI, most of these systems went relatively unchanged for the four mods. The tower upgrade and targeting system, as well as the enemy AI, became more of an evolving project with fixes to address issues, match changes in the game, and help with performance. After working with the C-sharp, there's a few tricks I would like to know prior to starting. First off, working with enums and their indexes rather than their strings would have proved to be much more efficient and organized. And secondly, method overloading to not require large amounts of variables to cover every situation would have also helped. Both of these would have saved a ton of time working on the systems later on. One of the things I thought, felt I did well and helped us work smoothly was to focus on the GDD when starting out so that I had plenty of systems set up with the finished product in mind such things as like adding a few lines of code or changing debug to player messages just to get a system going was great help and overall i think it's a great tip for anybody diving into a new project is picture that end goal before you even start your first script we wanted the players to traverse big intricate levels with multiple lanes areas and different elevations to encourage them to multitask and keep all the pylons safe from the enemy the first things to go wrong when creating these was figuring out the balance between size and performance. The bigger the levels, the harder it was to keep the frame rate up. Certain prefabs created by us would bog down the scene when the camera pointed straight at them. We learned how to work with level of detail, fog, lighting, and rendering only what the camera sees to help with all these issues. Throughout this whole experience, I learned a lot about level design, how to lead a player's eye to what you wanted to focus on, just by how you design a level, whether it be in the creation of canyons, mountains, ridges, etc in a way that naturally makes them look a certain way. I focus mainly on aesthetics, from the UI, HUD, level design, and the models that inherit this world. The HUD is the most important thing of a game because that is something the player is always looking at 24-7. So I sat down and spent many hours writing designs, creating concepts, till I finally got the final one, and then I worked from there. The biggest thing I could say for anyone creating a UI or HUD is start small and build from there. Always remember, real estate is important. Never overdo it. These past few months have seen me jumping from one section of our game to another. I started by working on the first person controller. It has went through a lot of changes throughout our game and is entirely different at this point. I then worked on getting the tiles to change color around the avatar to indicate what protocol the avatar was in, along with where things were able to be built. My efforts were then shifted to helping make some prefabs to flesh out the visuals of the levels, and then shifted once again to getting playtesters to provide valuable feedback on how our game should be modified. We wanted the player to multitask between surviving and taking the offense. The maps were designed to be large, and we intentionally wanted to keep information such as enemy spawn locations and enemy wave amounts hidden from the player. The HQ's purpose was to aid the player in the level and allow the player to move avatars across large spaces. This, however, was not received well, and it appeared to be more of an interactive menu where the player controlled a third-person mouse cursor. With that, the team made the decision to strip a lot of the HQ features, resulting in the game taking a larger resemblance as a first-person shooter rather than a tower defense. A lot of work was lost as a result from this. An entire tutorial was no longer relevant or matched the game. 
With this loss, the team ignored working on a tutorial to change the existing systems to fit the new feedback. As much as we found the feedback helpful, it didn't seem like we were given a fair chance to shape the systems into the game we intended it to be. Miscommunication and opinion got the best of the design. To end on a positive note, despite all the upsets, the team moved on and challenged ourselves to deliver the best game we could. We researched brand new concepts as we took on the massive challenge of designing a game like this one. And in the end, we learned more than we ever would have if we didn't set the bar so high.